Good morning and welcome to the worship services. First, Mr. Methodist Church Mark. Good to see each and every one of you here. And we welcome those who are watching via the internet. We pray that everything that is said and done will glorify and honor our Lord God. We give thanks to the Lord for his written word. Today's opening scripture comes from Isaiah 55. title of it that was given was the free offer of mercy. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercy shown to David. Behold, I have made him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. Behold, I will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you will uh, knows you uh, not will run to, because the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Seek the Lord while you may while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Let's pray. Precious Lord, you have blessed us richly with a new day. We give thanks for the beauty of the sunrise. We give thanks for the cooler morning temps. But we give thanks that you're our God, that you provide us all things, that you love us, that you shower us regularly with your grace and mercy. Be with us now, O Lord, as we offer praise and worship, songs and prayers to your mighty name. Be with, be with us as we share your living word. Recharge our spiritual batteries. Help us, O Lord. To be worthy servants of yours, help us, O Lord, to work faithfully in your kingdom. We give thanks for Jesus and his saving grace. Our prayer for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. If convenient, won't you stand with me for our opening hymn? In camp along the hills of light, these Christian soldiers rise. And press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing sky. Against the foes in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph drawn. By faith they like a whirlwind breath, swept o'er the poor field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our conquering shield. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory, oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame. We'll vanquish all the hopes of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. <clears throat> Let's affirm our faith together today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to worship this morning as we continue in our series of looking at God's characteristics. We looked at holiness last week. We're going to look at faithfulness today, and so a lot of our songs and scriptures will be about faithfulness. But a few announcements. First, we have our community meal today, so as soon as your Sunday school time is over at 9.30, I'm sorry, 10.30, I guess, right before 10.30 service starts. She'll, Tony will have some charcuterie trays together if y'all want to go ahead and take a meal to go. Or if you want to come back at, at 11.30 when the second service is over and, and eat with everyone, that'll be good. So feel free to stop down there. As soon as second service is over, we have a VBS planning meeting. So if you intend on helping with VBS in any way, you can come for the meeting. That'll be right at 11.30. Folks are going to grab a lunch and again sit down and eat. There's no youth tonight. Kids are back from camp, so they're going to take tonight off. They had a great five days at camp, and, and they're excited to share some of their stories with y'all. We have our brew crew breakfast in the morning, so that's our free community breakfast every Monday from 8 to 10, so come grab you a plate and have some fellowship. Monday night at 7 o'clock, we have a church council meeting. We'll go over the business. This is our quarterly meeting. We'll go over the business of the church. The trustees will also update everyone on the, the progress of all the repair work at the parsonage. Um, we have a jam core team meeting, so if you sit on the jam core team for planning, we have a meeting Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, and so be in prayer for our upcoming jam year as we are expecting well over 200 students to enroll in jam based on our up in enrollment, last, increase in enrollment last year. We also have our Bible study this Wednesday night. We are, uh, have two episodes left of this season for The Chosen. That's 6 to 7.30, dinner and child care. And then BBS that we're meeting about is July 28th through 31st. So save that date if you want to help physically decorating, cooking, cleaning, being here, organizing kids, just being in worship, or just being at home praying during that time. Save that date so you'll know when we're going to be here. All right. Brooklyn, if you'll come up to do offering, we'll have our prayer. Brooklyn will be carrying around a bowl, which is our kids' mission money, our change for change. They're beginning to collect to help with the some school supplies and maybe clothes that kids that come to us might need that we might not have their sizes in the clothing closet. So we're going to start preparing for that. So we're going to pray and at least in the Lord's Prayer. All right, let's pray. Gracious and faithful God, we thank you that you keep your word and that your word is true and living and breathing every single day. And so God, we thank you that your promise is that you'll never leave us and never forsake us and you will always be the power of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you for your presence here today with each of us, with each of those watching online, whether that be today or down the road. We thank you, God, for your promised presence through the Holy Spirit. God, we also thank you for the many gifts that you give us. Everything we have comes from you, Lord God. So we come in this time to give back to you. God, you ask for such a small portion from us for the many large ways that you bless us. And so God, we come today as cheerful we give from the bottom of our hearts, Lord God, all that we have, and we ask that you multiply it to benefit your kingdom and all that we call are called upon to introduce Jesus Christ to. We ask all this in your precious name as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. mission money, the gold plate for regular offering. We also have our, our plates and our box on the back and our main coat on the back of the pew if you wish to do your offering in that way. There is a day I love to hear, I love to sing, the 
Trust in God, also in me. The title, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the death the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that he is with me. Will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. As I said, we're 
we're going to continue looking at the characteristics of God after we looked at the Trinity and used the Apostles' Creed as our kind of our foundation and our model, our diagram for what the Trinity is for us. Um, we look today at the Godhead and we look at his characteristics. And so, as I said, we looked at holiness last week and the holiness of God. And today we're going to look at faithfulness and then we'll look at one more characteristic next week. And so I picked out Psalm 143.13 to talk about God's faithfulness. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all this is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Roll back one, one, one verse. I want you to look. It endures through what generations? All. All. The Lord is trustworthy in what promises? All. all. And he's all. faithful what? In, in all. all he does. Mm. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, the one who promises to love through all generations, to be faithful through all generations, to keep your word through all generations, we are the great recipients of that, of that love and that mercy and that grace and that faithfulness. So God, may we look a little more in depth at your faithfulness today so it teaches us how to be more faithful. God, be with us in this time. Hide me behind the cross and let your words fall upon each and every person here today and those that will watch this down the road. God, let your spirit pour out on us to hear your voice today. We ask all this in Christ's name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. So how many people, just starting with a few questions, how many people do you know who do exactly what they say? Exactly what they say. Before you answer, you may have some in your head before you answer, let me rephrase it. How many people do you know who do exactly what they say every single time they say it? <laughs> now before you answer, let me rephrase it again. How many people do you know who do exactly what they say every single time they say it, and they do it with the thoroughness and the perfection every single time that you never have to worry ever, ever, ever if they're going to do what they say? Now, before you answer that one, let me one more time. Now, I'm going to read this one. How many people do you know who, no matter what the circumstances is, no matter how they feel, will always do exactly what they say they will do every single time and do it with some thoroughness and the perfection that you never have to worry about anything they say or do because you know that if they say it, they will definitely do it without fail, without change, and without excuse. How many people do you know like that? Whoops. Right? The answer to the, any question you ask depends on how you ask it, right? It depends on the qualifiers you put on it. Well, that's a lot of qualifiers. And in the first question, you might have thought of somebody. And then the second one, you might have thought of a few less people. But in that last one, there's not anybody that reliable or that dependable except God. It's because no person can meet all of those qualifiers. No person can meet all of those qualifications except God. He alone is 100% truthful and faithful all of the time. The Bible can say several words for truth, but the most important one being the Hebrew word emet. Emet means firmness and stability and certainty. We get our English word amen from the Hebrew word emet. So every time basically we say amen, we're basically saying it is certain. It is absolutely true. We're saying God is true. God is faithful. God is the same 100% of the time. Now God's faithfulness also means that because he is truth, everything that he says and everything that he does is certain. He never breaks a promise. He is 100% reliable 100% of the time. He doesn't fail. He doesn't falter. He doesn't change. He doesn't disappoint. He does what he says, and he means what he does back and forward, right? We said that to our kids when they were young. I mean what I say. I mean what I say. I mean what I say, right? That's God, and it backs it up in Scripture. John 17, 3 says he is the only true and 1 Corinthians 9, 1, 9 and 1 Corinthians 10, 13 both say God is faithful. And John 5, 20, 1 John 5, 20 says, to him who is true. These verses, when you put them together, they establish God's faithfulness. And, and that it's not some minor or some secondary part of God's characteristics. It is God. To say that God is faithful goes to the very core of who he is. He keeps his word because if he didn't, he wouldn't be God. If he didn't keep his word, he wouldn't be God. Consider
consider these facts. His word is eternal. We know that because Psalm 119.89 says, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. God is faithful today as he was yesterday. We know that because Psalm 119.90 says, Your faithfulness continues through all generations. God is reliable in all of his works. Psalm 111.7 says, The works of his hands are faithful and just. He's faithful even when we are not. Second Timothy says, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. And then our salvation depends on God's faithfulness. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. See, our sanctification depends on God's faithfulness. First Thessalonians tells us the one who calls you is faithful and he will will do it. Lastly, our future resurrection depends on God's faithfulness. We know that because it says we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. See, all that God does rests on his faithfulness, and every blessing we have from our forgiveness to our mercy to our sanctification to our full life of resurrection depends on on God's faithfulness to us and those promises that he has given us. If God were not faithful, we could not be saved. If God were not faithful, we would not dare to pray. We would have no sure hope for the future, and we would go to our death with this desperate fear, wondering if there's really an afterlife, wondering if there's really a heaven. But see, we live in faith, and then we die in hope, precisely because God is faithful. Being faithful is this, this vast topic. And so there's just a few breakdowns we can do. So let me just encourage you that when you are discouraged, I want you to think about God's faithfulness and think back to the Bible. Think about the story of David and Goliath. When Saul asked David why he thought he could slay the giant, he's asking this young shepherd boy David that his only reason in going to the field was to carry sandwiches to his brothers, right? He's in this field, and Saul asks him why he thinks he could slay this giant, and the young boy replies to him with a story about God's faithfulness. He recalled God's faithfulness during his days as a shepherd, right? And that faithfulness gave him the courage to go forward, to believe that God would once again deliver him. David says in Samuel, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. All that he was doing was simply predicting from past experiences with God what would happen in the future based on God's unchanging character, the faithfulness of God. He knew God would deliver him in that situation because he'd done it so many times in the past. He trusted in God's faithfulness. So whenever you get discouraged, remember God's faithfulness. Recall how God's faithfulness came through in the Bible stories. Remember how God has answered your prayers. Reflect on those mighty deeds. Consider who it is that fights for you. And then, when all else fails, pick up five stones and get ready to defeat a giant. When you doubt your worthiness, remember God's faithfulness. Many Christians doubt if they're worthy enough to receive all of God's promises. From forgiveness to grace to eternal life. But we know that receiving God's grace and getting into heaven have nothing to do with being good enough. Because none of us would ever qualify. But in John 10, 28, Jesus said to his followers, I give them eternal life. And 1 John 5 says, so that you may know you have eternal life. The Bible doesn't say that you, so that you may hope you have eternal life. Or so that you may wish you have eternal life. The Bible says so that you will know you have eternal life, so that you will know you're going to heaven. This week I read across something written in one of my grandmother's old Bibles, and it says God not only keeps his promises, but he also keeps his people. I remember one time asking her about heaven, and she said, I'm as sure of heaven as if I'd already been there 10,000 years. See, it just makes sense to us as Christians, as people who have this steady, firm relationship with Jesus Christ. That just makes sense to us. But to someone who doesn't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship to Jesus Christ, that just sounds like this 
huge unrealistic presumption, right? Well, how do you know you're going to heaven? Well, because we have this sure and certain hope of resurrection and eternal life because the Bible says so, right? That old adage of because the Bible tells me so. We know because of Scripture. So when you are tempted to doubt your salvation, remember God's faithfulness. Consider his promises. Contemplate the cross. Gaze upon the Son of God and think of all he did for you. Recall that moment that you trusted Christ, that moment of justifying grace when you stepped into your salvation and knew that Jesus did it all for you. Let the gospel be your strength and then rest on the rock of you've made a mess of your life, remember God's faithfulness. How many times have we heard blessed words of John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful. Those three words guarantee God's forgiveness to us. To us erring, prodigal, sinful children. So have you made a mess of your life? Would you be ashamed for others to know everything you've said, done, and thought in the last five years? In the last five months? In the last five weeks? Or five days? Or maybe even in the last five hours? Right? How many of us have ever said, I don't need God's forgiveness? I'm hoping none of us, because we know we can't go without it. Right? We know that's the center of our life. If you know yourself at all, you know how much your sin is and how desperately you stand in need of God's mercy. Will it be there when you need it? Thank God the answer is yes. And I firmly believe that God will never look at us and say, I've had it, I'm done with you. I believe that because I believe in God who is faithful. I believe in God who is faithful, who is just and will forgive my sins and cleanse me and purify me from all in Think about your life. Think about God's faithfulness. And then bring your faults and your failures to the Lord and ask his forgiveness. And then remember that just as Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Don't stay and waller in the mud with the pigs, right? Get up, clean up, step up, and do better. And lastly, when you feel like the world is crashing in, remember God's faithfulness. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. What wonderful words those are. All of us will face moments sooner or later when we simply cannot find the strength to go on. Overwhelmed by life and the circumstances that surround our life. As Christians, we will still face pain. We will still struggle. We will still face loss. We will still face uncertainty in our faith. We don't get less of it because we love God, and we don't get less of it because God loves us. We just get a promise that he'll be faithful and never leave us. A promise that's full of hope and faithfulness. A promise like this one. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies, and you bathe my head and bless me with oil. My cup is so full it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. I am so glad to know how much God loves us, and that when we struggle, God is still with us. When we feel like we are failing, God is there, waiting and prepared with his arms open wide, just as the prodigal son ran home to his father. God is waiting. And I know that because Proverbs 3.3 3 says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. That means always trust. It says, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. What a wonderful testimony of God's amazing faithfulness to his children. To write his words on your heart to know what he means, that he's faithful and we can trust him, even in the midst of the most desperate moments. So I'm going to end where I started. How many people do you know who always do exactly what they say? I know. No matter the qualifiers you put on those answers. It's always the same. Oh, 
only God is faithful. Only God. So if you find yourself weary, look to the cross. Ponder the Son of God. Gaze upon that empty tomb. Read again those accounts of Holy Week, of Good Friday, of Easter Sunday. And consider what the Lord God did for you. And think about what that means. Think about what he did. If God can raise the dead, and he did, and if Jesus is alive, and he is, then why don't we worry about anything at all? And how can we be faithful? Here's how. Trust the trustworthy creator of the entire universe. And have faith in the faithful God that always keeps his word. And love the one who is the very definition of Gracious God, we come to you as sometimes people that fail in our faithfulness. So God, we ask your forgiveness in that, and we ask you to pick us up, clean us up, and allow us to step up and do better. God, we trust you. We have faith in you, and we love you. And sometimes when the world gets us down, we tend to step away from that. But we are so grateful that you continue calling our name. You continue chasing after us, and you never give up on us. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you that your love and your steadfast love and faithfulness never fail, and that your mercies are new every morning. So, God, we thank you on this morning as the sun rose, that new mercies rose with it. Help us to step into your grace, to step firmer in our faith, and to step closer to your footsteps all throughout we ask all this in your precious son's name. And all God's people said, Amen. If it's convenient, won't you stand with me? God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon, and in deep grace to say to prove my Savior lives. He calls he lives, I can face tomorrow. He calls he 